Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel and blog. I'm Jenny Hall. Today we are going to be working with October 2016 Paper Pumpkin Kit. This is a really nice kit. It is going to be filled with shaker components. I like shaker cards. I think uh, most people like shaker cards. These shaker card components are um, all with a fall theme and I really like that Paper Pumpkin included every single thing that you need in order to make the shaker cards. They put the foam strips, they put the sequins, they put the window sheets, they die cut the paper pieces already. Everything is all set and ready to go. The only thing that I would note and you'll see later in the video is that um, when you put two pieces of plastic together it creates a static and so we're gonna have to use some kind of a tool to um, to get rid of that static so right now I'm going over and showing everything that was in the kit and there are several different panels um, I believe you can see from the sheet right here that it shows you a lot of different layouts for the cards and you can even decorate the envelopes too which is really nice so I'm taking one of each color of the panel and the first card that I'm gonna make is going to be um, one of the cards that the um, that the kit tells me to make and I'm putting you I'm using the glue dots that's included I would like to use something else to adhere, but I always make one card by the kit um, just so that I can show you guys and demonstrate how easy it is to put it together um, using what's inside the kit. So I used the glue dot and I put the three panels down and now I have made a little banner sentiment also using glue dots and I used the inking spot that was inside the kit. It's chocolate chip. There's also some baker's twine that is old olive and, um, and I'm attaching all of that there. This is the item that I was mentioning earlier. Um, EK Success Tools makes an anti-static powder tool that is really great to prepare your paper for whatever your um, whatever it is that you need anti-static or anti-sticky. Um, if you were going to do um, some heat embossing, then you would use an embossing buddy that is filled with, I don't know, I think it's cornstarch and probably some other chemicals. And I believe it's the same thing that is inside the EK Success tool. I like to use the EK Success tool when I make shaker cards because it has a brush tip and I'm able to get up against the foam strips and use the anti-static tool to try to make those foam strips not be as sticky on the sides. Have you ever noticed when you see a shaker card or if you've made them that sometimes the sequins, there's as many stuck to the sides of the foam strip as there is floating around the card <laughs> and in order to prevent that in my card making I use the EK success powder tool um, it, the embossing buddy is what is sold by Stampin Up and it, it's really great but it doesn't have the ability to get up against the foam strips you could use regular cornstarch with a paintbrush and go up against the foam strips which would be effective but um, it's, it's really easy for me to use the other tool, which is why I guess somebody came up with, some, with a tool that has a brush tip. Now I'm putting all of the pieces together to complete the first card. And this is the card that is made the way that the kit is um, demonstrating. There's lots of different ways. I think there was eight different styles of how to make the card um, according to the paper pumpkin directions and um, I just made one of them. Now here's what I can come up with on my own. What I'm choosing to do is make a shaker card and I want to use my um, vintage leaves stamp set and the leaflets, um, leaflet framelits I believe they're called, but it's the coordinating framelits. So what I did in order to get my top panel to make this a shaker card is 
I cut die cut the large leaf from the um, leaf framelit set that coordinates with the large maple stamp and I die cut that on half of one of the of the cards that were in the kit because they come as uh, brown on the outside and white on the inside so I just chopped one in half and and I'm going to be using that and I grabbed a piece of vanilla cardstock lined them up and that way I could know where to stamp the maple leaf and um, now what I'm doing is taking the sentiment that is from the kit um, there's a couple of different sentiments in there three or four and they're all nice looking I, I think it be, would be nice just to have this card say hello um, instead of thank you or thanks a bunch or grateful for you um, there those are all great sentiments but sometimes just a hello is is nice to see as well and I'm attaching that with snail adhesive and lining up where the top panel is going to be so now I'm using the foam strips that were included in the paper pumpkin kit and I like the way that Stampin' Up! makes the foam strips because they're very manipulable, manipulatable. <laughs> um, I can really bend those around. I can make a circle out of them. They are, um, they're nice whenever I can just line them up into a corner and make a 90 degree angle out of them. That, that's always nice too. Where I am right now with putting the foam strips is I had a thought while I was applying it that I might want to have the shaker um, not come across the little bridge area where the stem is on the leaf. I didn't want to be able to see that um, through the front of the card. I thought it would be distracting and um, and so I decided to leave a little gap there. However, when you leave a gap in a shaker card, then you are just welcoming all of those sequins to jump right out the door. So what I'm going to do in that little area that I left the gap is I'm going to put some sequins down inside there to try to fill up that little area. So here's the powder tool once again and I'm using it on the paper and on the inside of the foam strips and I will also use it on the piece of acetate that goes on top of the area that holds the shaker filler and the reason I, I'm going to apply some of that onto the plastic is plastic plus plastic equals static electricity they will generate an electrical field between the two of them and stick to everything so this is going to be allowing my little pieces of shaker filler which in this case is going to be sequins it's going to allow them to move around a little bit better the first shaker card i ever made i i did not know that tip and i had all of the sequins that were sticking to the to the actual inside the the front window sheet and I couldn't for the love of me I could not understand what was going on and so I saw a card making video on YouTube from another card maker and I don't remember who it is and they showed that they prepped and this would take care of the anti-static and it you know it, it works so I have uh, made it just about to where I do this every time I make a shaker card I've had lots and lots of questions from you guys as YouTubers to ask what it is. What what is this this brushy looking thing in my hand? And basically it's an embossing buddy that has a brush. So use whatever is comfortable for your card making. And um if you're gonna make a shaker card, just put you know, stop and think about it if you can remember and see if it helps you. I'm taking the window sheet now and putting it off kilter a little bit just because you're not going to be able to see it through the front and I want it to kind of balance out where it touches the strips to give it a little bit uh, more stability. It's not necessary for the window sheet to be the full length of the card front because it's not going to be seen. It only has to cover up the area that is going to contain the shaker portion. So that's why I, I set it up the way that I did. 
Now it's time to put the card front and I'm lining up the card with what is um, the actual card base. And as I'm doing that, I discover that I did not put the piece of vanilla cardstock down right in the middle. It kind of shifted over. And so what happened is the image of the maple leaf shifted and it's not lining up with my foam tape. So when I put the foam tape down, I put it around the stamped image and the stamped image is not laying straight with the front cut die cut and so that's why I had to move a couple of foam pieces around. So the shaker portion is completed now and I want to add a little bit of interest to the front of the card. I think the shaker could stand up on its own two legs but I have these little die cuts that I made that I pulled off of the vanilla for the first card and they're so nice looking they're they're cute little leaves and they have texture to them too so I thought what can I do with these um, <laughs> so I took the little stamp and spot that was chocolate chip and I just kind of brushed the whole first leaf on it and then the second leaf I thought I would um, make it a contrast and just put the um, chocolate chip ink around the edges of the leaf and here I'm using some sequins that are from just the regular assortment I really love the sequins that are in this kit there's three different sizes of sequin which is nice because I, I like to see a variety and I like to use a variety of sizes on my cards and these colors will go far. This will either make a whole lot of shaker cards or the sequin variety will stretch out throughout uh, like maybe a year or a year and a half. <laughs> so thank you guys for joining me to, um, to view another card tutorial. For daily card inspiration, hop on over to my blog at jennystampsup.com. You can subscribe there. And if you haven't done so yet, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you in the next video.